Hello everyone. Uh, today, after a long gap, I return back again with a new topic uh, that is called uh, physiographic condition or geographical condition of a sum. So, okay, it's a very important topic uh, in most of the competitive examinations, especially in the uh, in the state of a sum uh, competitive examinations. The topic usually come uh, with different questions uh, like related to physiography of a sum, climatic conditions of a sum, geology of a sum or industries or different aspects of uh, geographical conditions of the sum. So considering the importance of this topic, uh, I prepare this class and hope uh, this class will help you to understand the geographical conditions of the sum. And uh, I believe that uh, this presentation will definitely help our uh, uh, UPSC or APSC aspirants as well as the other aspirants of different competitive examinations. So, Without much delay, I'm going to start about the <clears throat> geography of Assam uh, topic. So hope uh, this will help for you. So let's start the topic, uh, the geography of Assam. So we, we, are, we are very much aware that the state of Assam is uh, one of the important states uh, in, the, in the country of India. So we are located in the northeastern part of India. The state of Assam covers an area of 78,438 square kilometer. And the uh, boundary of the uh, Assam is basically in the north of Bhutan and Arunachal Pradesh. Uh, in the east, uh, Arunachal Pradesh, Nagaland, and Manipur. In the south, Meghalaya, Tripura, Mizra, and, and Bangladesh. <clears throat> and in the west, uh, the West Bengal. And uh, the state of Assam in the entire northeast is collected with, uh, connected with the nor main mainland India with the help of that Siliguri Corridor or, or Siliguri Corridor is the corridor which connect the northeastern part of India with the rest of the country. And uh, the Siliguri Corridor, the width of the corridor is 22 kilometer. We also call it as a second neck, okay? So geographically, the state uh, is located uh, from 22 degree, 19 minute north to 28 degree, uh, 16 minute north latitude. And from 89 degree, 42 minute east, to 96 degree 30 minute is the longitude. So this is the <clears throat> geographical extension of, uh, of the state of Assam. So if you look at the satellite images, you can easily visualize the geographical distribution of Assam and uh, the entire northeastern states, including Sikkim and Arunachal Pradesh, Managaland, Manipur, Mizoram, Tripura, Meghalaya, all are hilly states. And Assam is just like a basin. Okay, in, in among all the hilly states, Assam is, looks like a basin. It's a plain area. Okay, we have two here, two uh, plateau, uh, pl plateau region. Two means uh, it's a single plateau, but we divide it at the east curve along and west curve along district. These are plateau region, and we have a hill district called Dimahasau district. Besides this, uh, all the portions of uh, Assam are basically the plain area consisting of two major plain, the Brahmaputra plain and uh, Borak plain. So some basic uh, <clears throat> of uh, basic statistics and basic concepts of Assam we are going to elaborate here. So Assam covers 2.39% uh, of the total geographical area of the, of the country. So as a whole, we have 2.39% uh, of the total geographical of the uh, total geographical area of the country is covered by the state of Assam. So as per the 2011 census, Assam has a population of three crores. 12 lakhs 5,576 persons. Okay. So Assam ranked 14th in case of population size or in the country. And population growth in the state of Assam is 17.1% as per 2011 census. And population growth rate of country as a whole is 17.64%. So if you consider the highest population growth among the district of Assam, Dhubri district recorded the highest population growth that is 24.44 percent and Kokrazhar district recorded the lowest population growth that is 5.2 percent as per 2011 census. So some other basic concept of or basic uh, conditions of the Assam, the population density of the state of Assam is 398 persons per square kilometer and whereas uh, as a whole in the nation as a, a national average is uh, 382 persons per square kilometer. That means the <clears throat> density of population in the state of Assam is higher than the national average density of population. The population density is lowest in the Dimahasau district, which is hill district of Assam. It is 44 persons per square kilometer. 
and Kamrup Metro District had the highest population density, that is 1,313 persons per square kilometer. Among the state of uh, states of uh, of the country as a whole, India, the Arunachal Pradesh have the lowest population density, that is 17 persons per square kilometer. And in Indian context, Delhi have the most uh, densely populated. Delhi, Delhi is the most densely populated state. It have. Uh, 11,320 persons per square kilometer. That is the highest density of the, of the country as a whole. Look, next coming to the physiographic divisions of India. So if you look at the physiographic divisions of India, these are the three different physiographic conditions, the physiographic uh, divisions we can easily visualize in the state of Assam. So we can visualize three different types of physiographic conditions in the state of Assam. The number one is hill districts. Hills are basically in the in the hill, hill is mainly concentrated in the Dimahasao uh, region, or uh, Dimahasao region, uh, or Dimahasao district is the hill region. Next is the plain region. So plain region is Brahmaputra, the entire Brahmaputra valley is the plain region, and the Borak valley, the Kasar, Kodimkans, and Hailakant, which is six. These are also plain region of, that is Borak, Borak valley plain, and the Brahmaputra valley plain. And the third one is the plateau region. So we have uh, two, two hill, two plateau districts. One is the uh, East Karbianglong district and the West Karbianglong district. The East Karbianglong district also called as a Central uh, Karbianglong plateau and the Hamren plateau. So these are the two plateau regions we usually see in the state of Assam. So three different kinds of physiographic divisions are available in the state of Assam. So if you consider the characteristics of physiographic divisions of Assam, Brahmaputra Plain covers 58,360 square kilometer, and Borak Plain covers 6,962 square kilometer. Central Karbianglong Plateau and the Hamrang Plateau, they usually cover 8,270 square kilometer. So Plateau region cover 8,270 square kilometer in the state of Assam. And Karbianglong Plateau is an extension of the Indian Peninsula in the Assam and Northeast Indian states of India. It's also an extension of the Meghalaya Plateau. And the folded mountain that, that, that is available in the Dimahasa district, it covers 4,890 square kilometers in the state of Assam. <clears throat> Next, coming to the drainage system of Assam. So if you look at the drainage system of Assam, it's a very complex drainage system. We have a different river system is there. But the main major river is the Brahmaputra River. The Brahmaputra River is originated from uh, three different river that is called Siang River, Divang River, and Duhit River. All these three river assemble or join together in the in the district of uh, Tinchukya near the Sodia, and uh, all these uh, river join together. And from there, it, it is called as the Brahmaputra River. But the Siang is the main river uh, which originated from uh, Tibet or or China. Okay, and it entered in the state of uh, in the state of Arunachal Pradesh and flowing through the Arunachal, Arunachal Pradesh and entered in Assam near the Sodia region. So Siang, Divang, and Luhit assemble together, and uh, from there it is called as the Brahmaputra River. So if you look at the, the Greater Himalayan River system, so in India we have a three three different. Uh, Major river system. One is the Indus River Valley system. That another is the Ganga River Valley system and the Brahmaputra River Valley system. And another is the Magna Basin. That is basically in the with uh, the Bangladesh. Okay. So these are the three major river in the eastern part of India. That is uh, Ganga, Brahmaputra, and Magna Basin. So and near the northeast Indian states or in the eastern part of India, these are the three major river basins you usually find. So Ganga, Ganga, Brahmaputra, and Magna Basin, it covers near about 10 lakhs 86,000 square kilometer in Tibet, Nepal, India, and Bangladesh. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so these are the these are the uh, river basins which passes through four different nations: Tibet, that is China, Nepal, India, and Bangladesh, and it covers near about 10 lakhs 86,000 square kilometer. So if you look at the Brahmaputra River Basin. So River Basin Brahmaputra is uh, passes through China, then passes through Bhutan, and also it passes through our Indian subcontinent and and it moves towards the Bangladesh and uh, that particular area. So it is collectively called as the Yerlung Jango Brahmaputra Jamuna Basin. So this basin area covers near about six lakhs fifty one thousand uh, six lakhs fifty one thousand. Uh, 334 square kilometer and the total area of Brahmaputra basin is uh, in India is 1,94,430 uh, 
13 square kilometer and number of flood forecasting station in Brahmaputra basin uh, in, 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 in India is 27. So flood forecasting stations are placed by the different central agencies or state agencies to monitor the flood in the state of Assam as well as in the northern northeastern parts. And there are 27 flood forecasting stations uh, located in different locations along the Brahmaputra river. The average depth of the river Brahmaputra is 30 meter and the, the maximum depth is at 135 meter in near the Sodia. So Brahmaputra river flow through the four countries that is uh, India, China, Bhutan and Bangladesh. The year Brahmaputra means the collectively, uh, collectively I'm talking about the Yerlum, Jango, Brahmaputra, Jamuna Basin. Okay, So Brahmaputra river system collectively it covers the Yerlum, Jango, Brahmaputra, Jamuna Basin. Okay? So it flows through China. It flies in through, through China. It passes through 1700 kilometer, where it is called as the Yerlung Sanku. And India, it passes through 916 kilometer and under the name of Brahmaputra. And the Bangladesh, it, uh, it, 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 it is flowing through 284 kilometer, okay, as the name of Jamuna. So it is, uh, it is referred by the I'm referring it to Rahman and Varis 2009. They have published a research paper recently in 2009. And based upon that, I am sharing all this information to you. So let's coming to the <clears throat> Brahmaputra and Barak River Basin as a whole. What are the characteristics of these uh, basins? The Brahmaputra River has as many as 109 tributary system covering an area of 70,600 square kilometer within the state of Assam. So it have Brahmaputra River have 109 tributaries. Okay, so you can imagine the the catchment area and how how big the river system is, and some of the tributaries are so large that it have its own respective sub tributary system. Okay, some some of the tributaries are uh, it look like a big river. Okay, for example the I River, the Subansiri River, the Mongol River. So these rivers have their own tributary system. So the the Brahmaputra it passes through the Brahmaputra floodplain area and finally merged in the Brahmaputra River. So it have the big big river system, the Brahmaputra River system. The Borak River system also similar tributaries. Near about twelve major tributaries are there in the Borak River system, and some of the important tributaries of Borak River system are uh, Labak, Madhura, Talu, Sonai, Rukni, Singla. Langlai, etc. So these are the different uh, different uh, tributaries of uh, Borak River system in the in the southern part of Assam, that is in Borak Valley. So next, coming to the geology of Assam. So if you consider the geology of Assam, the com geology of Assam is quite complicated because uh, in uh, I already I already show you that the different physiographic divisions we have the the plain area, the plateau area, and the hilly area. So all these physiographic formations occurred in different geological period. Okay? So it's a very complicated geological structure in the state of Assam. So if you look at the geological formation of the different physiographic conditions, so uh, pre-Cambrian age, the Carbian Long Plateau and the, and the, the central Carbian Long Plateau and the Humblean Plateau form during the pre-Cambrian period, geological period. Similarly, the Mesozoic period, the alluvial deposits, plain formation occurred in the state of Assam. And tertiary, uh, tertiary, that is the current uh, geological age, tertiary age, the folded mountain and the plain area form in the state of Assam. And quaternary period, that is the part of uh, tertiary period, Brahmaputra plain and Borak Valley, Borak Valley plain form. So from this uh, geological structure or geological pattern, we can easily say that uh, Assam is not only formed in a single geological, uh, geological age, no, uh, Assam not formed in a single geological age, but it formed uh, in different geological age from ranging from pre-Cambrian to Mesozoic, Tertiary and Quaternary, and all these physiographic divisions we find here in the state of Assam form in different geological period. So if you look at the map here, here I'm showing the <clears throat> different kind of fault line and the trust area of Assam. So uh, earthquake uh, occurred in this fault line. So Northeast India, we know very well that Northeast India is a very uh, earthquake prone area and vulnerable for earthquake. And this earthquake occurred because of the existence of this fault line. So here you can see we have the red lines. These are all fault lines. Okay? These are all fault lines 
and these fault lines are sometimes the major epicenter of the major earthquakes occurred along these fault lines. And the black lines are these are the thrust areas, okay? Thrust areas or the, uh, the displacement of the earth crust is there in those areas. So here you can see the black uh, line in the upper part of the uh, Odonasal protest and along the Bhutan. That is basically called as the main central thrust. Okay? Similarly, just below that thrust, another thrust line is there along the foothill of Assam. Along the foothill region of uh, Indo -Hima Himalayan foothill, along the Bhutan and Assam border and Urnasala Assam border, that is basically called as the main boundary thrust. Similarly, in the east, uh, along the <coughs> Divang Valley and uh, towards the Namdafa side, that is another uh, for, that is another thrust called as the Misimi thrust. Okay. Similarly, in the in the upper Assam part, that is near the Jorhat, Sipsagar, and Dibugar. Uh, protein shukia, that basically Naga thrust and Isangs are parallel thrust are there. Similarly, in the in the uh, in the Indo Myanmar border, along the Indo Myanmar border, we have the Indo Burma thrust area. So from, these are the different thrust available in the different part of the uh, our northeast India. If you look at the fault line, the red color fault line, so we have a Dhubri fault here. We have the Kopili Fault from Bhairavkundo to Haflong, that uh, Kopili Fault, and most of the recent uh, earthquake in the state of Assam occurred along the Kopili Fault area. And we have the Dauki Fault okay, along the uh, along the Indu Bangladesh border in Meghalaya. Similarly, Silat Fault is there in the Bangladesh. Okay, Math Fault is available in the Mizoram. Okay, similarly, Posu uh, Fault in there in the Sina and in uh, India border area. Similarly, Sang Sanglang fault is there in the in the Myanmar area. So these fault lines are also very active fault line, and they are very much prone to that that earthquake or vulnerable to the earthquake in the in this particularly in the northeast region. So geologically, if you look at the pattern of Assam, so geologically very complicated, and we have different kind of faults, and these faults are the main cause of earthquake. Uh, tectonic faults are main cause of earthquake. In, in the in the state of Assam as well as in the northeast Indian state. So if you look at the seismic zone map of India, so if you look at the red colors indicating the zone five, okay, the world is uh, classified into different zone based upon the uh, intensity of the or, or vulnerability of the earthquake. So northeast India, Andaman, Nicobar, these areas are falling in the zone five. That means the maximum vulnerability of earthquake is there in these areas. So so. So you can understand that these are very vulnerable area for earthquake prone area. Next, coming to the climate of Assam. So, climate of Assam is uh, we know very well that it's a hot and humid climate or monsoonal climate prevail in the state of Assam. So, in general, the climate of Assam is characterized by relatively coolness, high relative humidity, heavy rainfall in summer, and drought in winter or winter season. So. These are the basic common characteristics of the entire state of Assam climatic conditions. Okay? The next, uh, if you go to the temperature and rainfall condition, because climate means the rainfall and temperature is another two important component. So in Assam, the mean annual maximum temperature, especially in a July and August, ranges from 30 degrees Celsius to 33 degrees Celsius. And the mean annual minimum temperature, usually in a December and January, ranges from 8 degrees Celsius to 15 degrees Celsius. If you look at the rainfall condition, Assam experiences uh, an average annual rainfall of 230 centimeters. And during the winter, the average annual rainfall is 6 centimeters, and in summer, it is about 64 centimeters. So, rainfall uh, variability is there in the state of Assam. Similarly, temperature variability variations is also there in the state of Assam. And the climatic condition, if you look at the climatic condition, temperature and rainfall play a major role. To define a uh, define the climatic condition of a particular region, so based upon the different uh, rainfall pattern, the Inter Indian Meteorological Division or the department they have identified the Assam. Uh, they have identified three different rainfall belt in the in a, in the state of Assam. Okay? So considering different districts have different uh, rainfall uh, zone, so Assam have divided into three distinct rainfall belts. So heavy rainfall belt moderate rainfall belt and the low rainfall belt. So heavy rainfall belt, uh, the IMD in the Indian Meteorological Department, they have identified Lakhimpur, Dhamazi, Dibugar, Tinsukia, Sipsagar, Sorido, Zorhat, Dhuri, 
Kokrazar, Bongaigaon, Siran, Gualpara, Kassar, and Koring Gorth as the high or heavy rainfall belt. And the moderate rainfall belt districts are Borpeta, Nalbari, Baksa, Kamrup, Dorong, Udalguri, Sunitpur, Morigaon, Gulaghat, Karpiyano. So these are the areas where the moderate rainfall occurred. And low rainfall belt are basically located in the southern part of Nogaon district and in the Hodai district. So Hodai district is also called as the rain shadow area or rain shadow zone of Assam. Or Homiat Kolami Bistisai on Sol Bulikohai, to Hosai district or Dokin or Nogaon district or Dokin or portion of Bistisai on Sol, by rain shadow zone Bulikoha. So if you look at the season wise normal average rainfall in Assam, so winter season of, uh, the rainfall is basically 51 uh, millimeter, in summer season it is 578 millimeter. In monsoonal season from June to September, it's uh, 1,489 millimeter. And pre monsoon, uh, post monsoon, sorry, post monsoon from October to December, which is 176 millimeter. If you make an average of annual average, it is 2,294 millimeter. That means 230, uh, almost 230 centimeter rainfall occurred annually in the state of Assam. So next, coming to the agroclimatic zone of Assam. So based upon the climatic conditions, different agricultural practices happen in the state of Assam. And based upon that, the Assam State uh, Space Application Center, they have identified six major agroclimatic zones in the state of Assam. So these are basically upper Brahmaputra Valley zone, the North Bank Plain zone, the lower Brahmaputra Valley zone, the hill temperate zone, Porak Valley zone, and the central Brahmaputra Valley zone. So upper Brahmaputra Valley zone, it covers Tinchukia, Dibugor, Soraideo, Sipsagor, Jorhat, and Gulagat. So these are the area which is classified as the upper Brahmaputra Valley zone. Here, the maximum tea gardens of Assam are located in these districts. Okay. Besides this, there are some other uh, agricultural practices like, for example, Ogoru, which I Ogoru, which Ogoru maximum Gulagat district of production, or Jorhat or production. Hey, on solo Hanuka Honor Ketibilla Bissika, Hanuka Honor Agricultural Practice Biladam Bissika, Upper Bromoto Village, Dekibole. Similarly, North Bank Plain Zone, North Bank Plain Zone, basically Hamazi, Lokimpur, Bishonach Rally District, Sunitpur District, Udalguri District, and the, our Dorong District. So these are the area where the North Bank Plain Zone, uh, agri agroclimatic zone, is recognized like that. Here also tea gardens are available. Some of the biggest tea gardens like Munabari Tea Garden, Potamkot Tea Garden, Atharigat Tea Garden. Bamunzuli tea garden, Urungajuli tea garden. So these tea gardens are located in this particular area. And similarly, banana cultivation, okay, wheat cultivation, so that some uh, some corn cultivation, so that kind of cultivations occurred in this uh, North Bank Plain zone. Next one is the lower Brahmaputra Valley zone. Lower Brahmaputra Valley zone, the lower Assam area, the Kukrazar, Dhubri, Mankasar, uh, Gualpara, Kamrup, Metro, Kamrup Rural, then Borpata, uh, Bazali, Nalbari, Baksa, Tamulpur. So these are the area where uh, which are called as the lower Brahmaputra Valley zone, okay, agri agroclimatic zone. Next one is the hill temperate zone. Hill temperate zone is basically kind of covered the Karbian Long, uh, East Karbian Long district, West Karbian Long district, as well as the Dima Hasao uh, district. Here the maximum set uh, fruits cultivation like pineapple, okay, and uh, other citrus food production happen in these particular areas. Next one is the Borak Valley, Borak Valley zone, Kasar, Koningon, Haila Kandi. <clears throat> These are the three districts where the, the Borak Valley zone is uh, identified as the three districts are identified as the Borak Valley zone, where where maximum the tea gardens are available near about 26 major tea gardens are there in the uh, these three districts, and also paddy cultivations also uh, where its intensity of paddy cultivation is very high in Borak Valley zone. Next one is the central Brahmaputra Valley zone that is Morigao, Nogao, and Hosai district. So these three, three districts uh, have different uh, climatic condition or agroclimatic zone identified as the agroclimatic zone. This is called Central Brahmaputra Valley Zone. Here also the uh, paddy cultivation or the different kind of uh, fishery activities or uh, different perfume industries are also occurring. Hosai district is famous for perfume. Azmal for perfume is famous uh, worldwide and that is located in the Hosai. Okay? So that kind of agricultural activities and that kind of industrial activities happening in this particular Region. So these are the six different agroclimatic regions available in the state of Assam. So next coming to the soil pattern of Assam. So if you consider the soil, we have basically most of the state of Assam is covered with the elevated soil because uh, plain area is maximum Borak Valley and Borak Plain and the 
Brahmaputra plain. The, these plains are mainly formed because of the alluvial deposit of river Brahmaputra and Bora. Besides the alluvial soils, we have other kinds of soil, like for example, Bhavar soil. And Bhavar soils are located just near the foothill region. Okay, We already know very well that Bhavar and Terai, two different regions are available along the foothill, uh, along the foothill, Himalayan foothill region of the entire country. So Bhavar soil is basically just near the foothill region are there. These soils are very suitable for grass and growing and maximum number of uh, dairy farms and dairy activities are happening in those areas. Okay. If you look at the distribution of the some dairy for dairy livelihood people or who people who associated with dry dairy uh, livelihood patterns, they are settled in this particular area. Similarly, laterite soil, laterite soil are located just near the Timahasa area and also in the Karbialong districts. Okay. So all alluvial soil, all alluvial soils are located. Uh, just uh, uh, away from the some uh, plain area, these are plain area, but they, they are far or away from the main Brahmaputra river plain area. Okay, initially deposition started there, but uh, now the during the flood, heavy flood uh, deposition uh, usually happen in those areas. But the flood no hoy, kintu all hoy. the deposition hoyile, that the soil formation hoyile, into etia hoy jagat soil formation. Deposition one eye, but all alluvial soil as a head to head on soil beloved the people for that. Bekakamar, Uzai, Nogon district or Dokin or Palet, okay, Pasip Sagor, Tinsukia, he answered to put in Lugino Kahor, the consul as a heavy lot of all alluvial soil basically. The people of the Yabisot is a red loomy soil. The red loomy soil is basically located in the Dimahasa district and also in the Kirby along the district, Gulagat district, the eastern part of Gulagat district, also the red loomy soils are formed. Similarly, red sandy soil, red sandy soils are also found in the hilly hill districts of Assam, okay, especially in the Dimahasa district and Karbiano. And terai soils are just located near the Bhavar soil, just uh, south of the Bhavar soil, the terai belt is there, and our terai belt have cons is consisting of the terai cell. And these are very much suitable for grassland. So most of the grassland areas, for example, the Manas National Park, the the Raimona National Park. So these are located in this particular area, and they these are very suitable for some agri some for some pattern of vegetation like grass, savanna grassland, dry savanna grassland, and also the sal forest. Okay. Next is the um, young alluvial. Young alluvial is thus located near the Brahmaputra River or the tributaries of Brahmaputra, and these are formed mainly because of the uh, recent deposits of the alluvial deposits of by the river. And next one is the a river so the, we, we can visualize the river Brahmaputra here and these are the different pattern of soil available in the state of Assam and these soils are quite fertile and most of the soil are of some are quite fertile and very useful for agricultural activities okay so uh, so agricultural activities are very prominent in the state of Assam so next coming to the natural vegetation so if you look at the map here you can see the land use pattern of the uh, different land use pattern of the um, Land use pattern of the state of Assam. So here you can see different categories of uh, forest also. If you consider the forest types, Assam have 11 different kinds of forests you can visualize in the state of Assam. So tropical evergreen forest, tropical semi evergreen forest, tropical mixed moist deciduous forest, sal forest, bamboo forest, pine forest, river and grassland, peak forest, grassland, then degraded forest, scrub forest. So like that, different kind of forest type usually find. And these are the respective areas of the forest types of Assam. And the maximum forest, the maximum uh, is available in the tropical mixed moist deciduous forest. It covered near about 11,857 square kilometer in the, of, in the state of Assam. And it covered 15.09% of the total geographical area of the state of Assam. Tropical mixed moist deciduous forest. And total area of forest cover is 26,832 square kilometer and which is 34.21% of the total geographical area of the state of Assam. So next coming to the biodiversity. So if you consider the biodiversity, Assam is quite rich for in, in, in biodiversity. So we have uh, seven national parks and 21 wildlife sanctuaries. The Kaziranga National Park, we have the highest population of 109 is there in the Kaziranga National Park. The total area of Kaziranga National Park is 1,090 square kilometer. Namiri National Park is located in the Sunitpur district, which is 200 square kilometer. Orang National Park is located in the Dorong and Sunitpur district, which is 278.8 square kilometer. 
Manas National Park in located in the Baksa and Sirang district near about 950 square kilometers in the in the Manas National Park it covers and Dibru Soifa National Park it cover it, it it located in the Dibrugor and Tinsukia district which is it covers 350 square kilometer and Raimona National Park is uh, located in the Kokrazhar district it is 422 square kilometer and Dihing Pakkai National Park is located in the Tinsukia district it is 231.6 square kilometer and all these national parks are very rich in biodiversity and we have different kind of endemic or different kind of uh, critically endangered species also or vulnerable species or endangered species are also available in those areas. For example, Royal Bengal Tiger, for example, our <clears throat> greater one on rhino, okay, Elephas Maximus, that is Asian elephants, okay, or different kind of mammals, reptiles, okay, these are available in these, uh, these uh, wildlife, these in national parks and wildlife sanctuaries of Assam. So next coming to the natural natural hazards. So if you look at the natural hazards, the Assam have three different kinds of natural hazards usually find. Uh, first one is the um, flooding. Flood is a, a, is a very common thing in the state of Assam because we, as you already mentioned, as I already mentioned, Brahmaputra river system is a very big river system. We have 109 tributaries almost, okay? I have, and uh, because of that, uh, flooding is very common in the state of Assam. And next, another important hazard is basically river bank erosion because of the flooding and because of the soil composition of, uh, of state of Assam that is mainly alluvial soil and the erosion is more prominent in the state of Assam. River bank erosion is more prominent. And the third one is the earthquake. I already, already mentioned that earthquake, Northeast India is quite vulnerable for earthquake and we have different fault line and thrust areas and because of that maximum or most of the earthquake happen in the state of Assam. So these are the different natural hazards usually happen in the state of Assam. Next, coming to the economy of Assam. So economy of Assam is mainly based on agriculture based economy. So we have uh, tea cultivation, India total 50% of tea production happen in India in the state of Assam. And we are also paddy cultivation is uh, quite enormous in the state of Assam. Rubber cultivation is now growing up. Zoot cultivation is also prominent in the state of Assam. And these agricultural activities are uh, helping in the in the growth of the economic growth of the state. Similarly, we have the different mineral resources like crude oil, and we know very well that Digbo is the oldest crude oil in the state of uh, Assam and in as a whole in, in India. So crude oil is quite prominent in the in the most of the oil fields are located in the upper Assam area in the Tinshukia district, Dibugar, uh, Sipsagar, Zorhat, Gulaghat district. So those are the oil field areas. Next, coal is quite uh, available in the state of Assam in the in the in the Nahar Pur, Nahar Kotia area or in Tinsukia district area that the, the coal is quite prominent. Natural gas is also very prominent in the state of Assam. Besides this, tourism also contributed uh, contributed quite in the economy of the strip. So now the eco tourism concept is emerging and the new uh, homestay concept are now coming up in the state of Assam. But Instead of having so much of potentiality in the tourism sector, the proper growth and development in tourism sector is still uh, waited. We are waiting for that. The next, uh, if you look at the map of uh, mineral uh, map of Assam, so if you look at the most of the industrial activities happening in the upper Assam area, that is mainly in the Tinsukia district, uh, Dibugar district, uh, Zorhat, Sipsagar, and here the maximum tea gardens and tea industries are there, and also the mineral uh, resources are available in those areas. And, that's why the industrial development and economic development is more prominent in the eastern part of the state of Assam than in comparison to the southern and western part of the state of Assam. <clears throat> if you look at the industry, Assam can be categorized into two different kinds of industries. One is the cottage industry, another is the factory based industry. So Assam is industrially, uh, we consider it as a backward state. Uh, India is backward in the industrial sector, but Assam is far behind in, in comparison to the other states like Maharashtra or Tamil Nadu or Gujarat, okay? So we are still lacking behind in industrial growth and development. But still we have some cottage industries, for example, sericulture activities or weaving activities are very prominent. So we have the Swalkusi is one of the leading weaving center throughout the Assam and we have the Tripat Muga, Kapur, Amitate Buahai. Bell metal, Sotebari is famous for that. Brass work, Okay, so like ivory walk. So these are the cottage industry, the thousand year old industries are still existing in, in the state of Assam and they are growing up gradually with the help of new uh, with the implementation or application of new modern tools and techniques. 
similarly tourism also we considered as an industry now so tourism is the now ecotourism concept is now coming up in the state of, in the state of assam like in we have seven national parks 21 wildlife sanctuaries so we have lots of natural beauty we have um, we have a complete foothill region which is very uh, terai belt we have a harbor belt so we have plenty of uh, scope to offer in tourism sector okay so we have good potentiality but still we need uh, lots of investment as well as the we need lots of uh, other infrastructural facility facilities to go in this tourism sector but we have the potentiality if you look at the factory based industry petrochemical industries are also available refineries are there in the state of assam duliazan uh, refinery nungoligor refinery uh, nunmati refinery then brpl in bongaigaon so petrochemical industries are uh, quite prominent in the state of assam and it help in the growth of other industries like grass kicker industries are growing up similarly tea industry is quite one of the prominent and oldest industry in the state of assam sugar industry is also available in the state of assam jute industry textile industries are uh, coming up for example we have a textile industry in prank bosumi synthetic limited in sipazar near dorong district in dorong district so that kind of industries are there but factory based industry we have uh, lots of potentialities but uh, still we are lacking behind in factory based industries i believe in coming years definitely with the uh, with the implementation of blue kiss policy by the government of india this particular region or the or the state of assam will definitely get the better exposure in industrial sector especially in the software development or skill uh, skill based industries or human resource development industries that kind of things we can easily implemented in the state of assam so that's much for today so i tried to cover the, all the aspects of uh, geographical condition of assam in a very uh, small video so uh, i covered the physiography division i covered the geology of assam i covered the climatic conditions uh, agroclimatic regions soil conditions okay, and the industries and economic conditions of assam so i believe uh, that that this uh, this presentation will definitely help our students and the aspirants who are preparing for uh, competitive examinations or different kind of competitive examinations so besides this it is also very essential to understand the state of assam because we are living in our uh, own state and uh, we should understand what kind of state we are we are living in and what is the condition geographical condition of our state so it is a very ami hokole jana usit ami jekhon rajyat aso hei rajya khon bikhe jana jana to otike proyojon ei karone moi ei video to apnar lokor sot share korlu hopefully এই ভিডিওটো সকলোৰে কামত আহিব আৰু আপোনালোকে যদি এনেকুৱা ভিডিঅ' আৰু ফিউচাৰ বিচাৰে বা বিচাৰে আপোনালোকে কমেণ্ট কৰিব চেনেলটো ছাবস্ক্ৰাইব কৰিব যদি আপোনালোকে বিচাৰে ছাবস্ক্ৰাইব কৰিব আৰু আপোনালোকে কমেণ্ট কৰিব পজিটিভ নেগেটিভ দুটা কমেণ্ট কৰিব পাৰে আই এম অপেন টু অল আই মোৰ ডেফিনেটলি উই কেন গ্ৰ' উই কেন গ্ৰ' টুগেডাৰ আৰু মই ডেভেলপ কৰাৰ কাৰণে স্কোপ ডেফিনেটলি থাকিব তো আপোনালোকে যি ফিডবেক দিয়ে মই ডেফিনেটলি আই ট্রাই মাই লেভেল বেস টু মডিফাই দা থিংস এজ ফর মাই টেকনোলজিক্যাল নলেজ থ্যাংক ইউ ভেরি মাছ হোপ দিস প্রেজেন্টেশন উইল হেল্প ইউ থ্যাংক ইউ থ্যাংক ইউ ভেরি